Hello again, my fellow horror readers. I'm here today with a couple picks, a couple of recommendations uh, for the spooky season. And I kind of challenged myself to talk about books that I haven't before, well, not that I've never mentioned any of these, but uh, to kind of think outside of the box of the books that I normally recommend to you guys. So that's what I did. First one, I know I have talked about this one before, so please don't remind me. I know, I already know. This is Stuff for the Children by Craig DeLuey. This is a book that is, uh, oh my gosh. It wasn't like my favorite book in the world when I read it, but it's one that lingers in my mind and I think about it often and it had great creepy imagery. This is about this disease, this virus or something that wipes out almost all of the children on the planet Earth. This follows a couple different parents and it was uh, effective reading things from their point of view. And I promise, listen, I promise that this is not a spoiler because it says so on the back of the book. It tells you this, that this is going to happen. So the children die. Their parents are going through this crazy grieving process. They're trying to figure out what to do with the bodies of millions of children, which is horrible to think about. Um, and then the children start coming back to life, but <laughs> they might need some extra nourishment to uh, stay alive. And so this story really digs into like what a parent would do to keep their child from dying again. And man, this is a good book. Um, like I said, not my favorite book of all time. Um, and I don't just like it because there's a character named Coral in it, which I've never, you know, come across before. That was super cool. I'd like to know where Craig DeLouis got that name from because it's not a common name. But this is creepy. The children are creepy. Ugh, just the way that he writes about it is creepy. It's kind of like Pet Cemetery where, or Crossroads where you are with these parents during a really um, terrible time in their lives. And it's one that I think more people should read because it was, I don't know, I liked it. Next book I'd like to talk about is Within These Walls by Anya Allborn. And uh, Anya Allborn, I really like almost all the books of hers that I've read. And this one might be my second favorite. Um, this one is about an author who is digging into this old case about this cult. And it's very Charlie Manson-like. It's very, it very much feels like the Manson family when you're learning about what happened um, and like the ideologies of this group and stuff like that. But he takes himself and his daughter and they move into a house that was previously occupied by this group of people. He did this, it was like a stipulation given to him. If he wants to interview the man who ran this group, the cult leader, the guy said, okay, I'll do it, but you have to move into this house. And man, things get very creepy. Um, Anya Alborn has, she just has great writing and she, uses imagery very well in her books and um the whole book is just very atmospheric and it feels like dark and heavy when you're reading it so that's why that's really why i think that this would be best for a season like the fall or you know the month of october where you're trying to read spooky shit next i would like to talk to you about Rin by koji suzuki this is the book that inspired the movie adaption that scared me a lot when I was a kid. I actually somehow, my parents took me to see this in theaters, uh, which is very weird because my dad was very religious and I guess this is a little bit before they thought that um, watching scary movies would invite the devil to... <laughs> possess your family and I remember being very scared there was lots of jump scares in the movie obviously but I'm here to talk about the book this is about a reporter what was his name a journalist Asakawa 
Uh, and he learns of this videotape that is rumored to kill you a week after you watch it. And he hears about this because his niece dies after watching this video. So he gets in his hands on this video and he watches it himself and things get very spooky from there obviously um, and he really wants to find the origins of the videotape. Um, he wants to figure out how it was filmed so that he could break the curse. Eventually his friend kind of gets roped in into it and so they're trying to gather to like I guess like break the curse or get to the bottom of what happened so that maybe they won't die. This also has some spooky imagery in it. I really like horror that I've read from Asian authors. The way that they write definitely feels different than American authors and sometimes you need that to like invigorate your reading I think. It's always good to read um, translated works I feel like. This was translated by Robert G. Rondemar and Glenn Wally. So if you like the movie, or even if you didn't like the movie, maybe you should check out the book and see if you like it better. Next, I would like to recommend kind of a more popular book, I guess. It was really popular when it came out, but that's World War Z by Max Brooks. It's been quite a few years since this came out. Uh, and this is a great book that I feel like I need to reread. This happens. It's like the account of the zombie apocalypse. And what is so great about this book, I thought, is that it's told from, it's like all these snippets from different people in different places telling you what happened, maybe why it happened, um, how these zombies work and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, people in Korea, people in Japan, people in the states people i think in like siberia so many people so many different stories and it's it's like reading a different book every time you turn every time you get to a new chapter uh so this one was really fun i got through i read through this so dang quick because i thought it was so exciting i think my favorite story was about i think it was north korea um where that spooky stuff happened and I think you know, if you know what I'm, what I'm talking about, I think you know what I mean with the teeth. That was the best one. The movie, horrible. I hated it, but the book was so good. Next, I would like to recommend The Nest by Doug, Gregory A. Douglas. And this is, luckily, I was able to get the reprint by Valancourt Books. And I think if you want to read this, that's where you'll have to get it, because I've literally never seen a copy of The Nest in any used bookstore or any online bookstore or, or I've ne literally never, I've never seen a copy of it, like even some that somebody else owned, I don't think. But this is about a quaint little, I think it's Cape Cod. I didn't, I actually was going to say Maine until, um, where is Cape Cod? Now I have to look it up. Massachusetts. That's different than Maine. So this takes place in Massachusetts, in Cape Cod, in a very quaint little tiny town that's mostly um, populated by tourists. So like in the off season, it's very small, very quiet, like only a handful of people live there uh, all year round. So what happens is that these fucking giant cockroaches uh, start killing people. And some scientists are called in to try to stop them and this is just it's outrageous it is gory and creepy there is a little girl who calls them cockroaches which is exactly what my child calls them we have a cockroach well not a problem i guess it's just that everyone has cockroaches here like i mean not an infestation but like i find them in my house sometimes and i have to kill them it's horrible. I fucking hate cockroaches so much, which maybe like added to my dread of uh, this, like reading this book. But it was definitely, it was like reading a creature feature. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this book and I think you would too. Okay, last one I want to talk about here is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This is not a straight up horror book. I would really categorize it more as like a paranormal book. Some people say fantasy, but I don't think that there are very many, I don't know, I guess it's kind of, I don't know. 
different strokes for different folks, of course, but this is, I'd say, a paranormal book with some very creepy parts in it. Um, this is about a young woman named Alex Stern and she has a hard life growing up. She eventually gets into drugs and one day she wakes up in her apartment and her roommates are dead and she's like the only person alive and nobody knows what happened and while she's in the hospital recovering from this incident somebody comes to her and tells her that she's being enrolled into Yale and she's like why would that happen <laughs> I've not done well in school and they're like well this is happening because you can see the dead and she can see the dead and that's why she um, is accepted into Yale and she finds out that Yale has these secret societies, like these secret houses, and each house has kind of like its own different magic that it does. Um, some deal with like werewolves and some deal with like necromancy and some deal with like illusions. And the house that she is in is called Lethe and they're kind of what guards the rest of the world from these houses like she kind of has to make sure that they're not doing anything untoward to um any of the other students at yale you know make sure that they're behaving and stuff like that eventually this like murder mystery happens and she's trying to figure out which of the houses might be involved in this and why and it is a really good book like i said it has a lot of creepy stuff that happens uh, because she can see the dead and the way Lee Bardugo writes about it. I've been saying this over and over again, I know, but it's just such great spooky imagery. And this one was a little bit hard to get into because it's like an info dump. There's a lot of information at the beginning, you know, as to like how this world works, um, how Alex's world works, I guess. And um, I, it, I had to kind of fight through that. And at first I was like, I'm not sure I'm gonna like this book. Once the pace picked up, I could not put this down. It was so good. So I think it would be perfect for an October read. It's very atmospheric. It feels like everything is dark in this book. You know what I mean? Well, those are the six books that I think you guys might like. And I think would be great to read during October or really just the fall in general um, when everything's dying and shit. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, as always. Let me know if you've read any of these and if you've liked them. Let me know if you have any great recommendations for October. Just uh, let me know. I will see you guys later. Thank you, goodbye.